tired of waiting for shuttles, want to fly wherever you want, whenever you want, then what you need is a pilot's license. And what's the best place to get one? That's right, Chase Winger's Flight School. I do theory, I do practice, and I'm licensed for weapons training. With my tried and tested training course, you'll be an ace pilot in no time, guaranteed. Success not guaranteed, no liability in case of explosion, blunt trauma, exsanguination, asphyxiation, or rapid decompression. Before we begin, I need to perform a few routine physical tests. Regulations, you know. Please move your head as far up or down as you can. Okay, now please walk a few steps. Faster, please. Okay, now do a few jumping jacks, please. Finally, a few squats, please. Great! You seem to be in good physical shape, so we can move on to your flying lessons. Let me know how you want to proceed. Yes? We'll start by using the transporter room outside to go to the docking bay. Quasar, Vanguard. You have cleared for undocking. Proceed. the steering controls to turn your ship. Now, use the strafing controls to move sideways or vertically. Okay, before we continue, make sure there's no obstacle right in front of you. I can't check from here, so I have to trust you on this one. When you clear, gently accelerate forwards. There's usually a speed limit inside docking areas, but you don't have to worry about exceeding it. The ship's computer will limit the speed for you. You can also fly backwards. Try this now. what you've learned so far. I've prepared a little course for you. Please fly close to each of the navigation beacons in turn. Your 
next target will always be marked in orange. Nav beacon. Docking granted. Don't worry, you're not being timed. Argon Wharf. Tired of waiting for shuttles? Fly to the Mark Station. Now that you're in range, interact with the station to request docking permission. Follow the trail of lights to your assigned dock.
a ship in the indicated direction. I'll be able to see an abstract representation of the docking bay and your position relative to it. Each element must be aligned before you can dock. When aligned, the elements change colour from red to green. I usually align my orientation first. Begin by moving the centre of your crosshair to the matching element in the docking UI. fully aligned, let go of the steering controls. There's a triangular element pointing upwards that represents your ship's position over the dock. If it's darkened, then your ship is outside the displayable area. Your ship is currently too far back. Slowly accelerate forward and stop when the horizontal line turns green. If you overshoot, just stop and correct. Move your ship down until the docking computer takes over. If you can afford them, there are software upgrades that make this process a bit easier. your speed bar just below the crosshairs. You will keep accelerating for a while until you reach your ship's top travel speed. You've probably noticed other modes in the list when you activated this one. Each mode has its special use and only one mode can be active at a time. Now that you've gathered some speed, you'll notice that steering has become much harder. This is why it's best to point your ship towards your destination before engaging travel mode. Now, turn off the mode the same way you turned it on. You are now coasting, which means a few things. First, your ship is decelerating much more slowly than it normally would. Second, steering is easy again. Give it a try now. notice that your ship keeps flying in the same direction. You can come to a stop much more quickly by actively decelerating. This automatically re-engages the safety limits on steering. Try it now. As for the travel direction, any strafe movement will revert that to the behavior you're used to. You can also drop out of travel mode more quickly, skipping the coasting phase. Let's try this now. Please reactivate travel mode.
Now wait until you build up some speed. Whenever you're ready, quickly drop out of travel mode. Great! The next part will take place some distance from here, so let's take a break and let the autopilot do the hard work for now. The autopilot automatically navigates to the current objective. It engages travel mode when appropriate and makes use of gates, accelerators and highways. It even avoids obstacles in the way. Uh, well, mostly, which is why you still need to be at the controls. You may notice that it sometimes turns travel mode off when everything seems wide open to you. The safeties are on a bit of a hair trigger, probably to keep insurance rates from skyrocketing. Time. Today, we'll learn how to use the various means of travelling between systems and sectors. Before we start, please note the yellow icon below your crosshair. The manuals call it the check engine light, but I've never seen an engine that looks like that means that you can't make use of your travel mode right now. That's because this lesson takes place in a region that prevents it from working. Being hit by a weapon disables your travel drive for a short time as well, so don't rely on it to get out of trouble. I've also heard of weapons that target this system specifically to make you an easy target for pirates. On to the actual lesson at hand. In front of you, is a jump gate. Sometimes you'll find one that's inactive. This one's working though, which you can tell from the swirly bits in the middle. To use it, simply fly through. That's all there is to it. Now, I've been told that the technology is totally different, but in practice, these accelerators function pretty much exactly like jump gates. Fly through this one. While jump gates connect different star systems, accelerators take you to different places within the same one. Up next, a superhighway. They also take you to sectors within a star system. The main difference is that they are directional, so you need to use the entry gate, not the exit. Fly into the entry gate. Superhighway, unknown sector. As you see, it's a tiny bit slower than the other methods. I like it though, it lets me enjoy the view. Highways can also be local. The entry of one is right in front of you. Fly into it. Entering Iwas Twin for the Cove.
Highway. It has a much lower speed than the superhighway we just came out of, but it's still a whole lot faster than most ships can travel on their own. It's not wide enough for capital ships, though. Medium-sized ships are the largest that can use them. Local highways can be entered and exited at any point along the way. Fly into the one right in front of you. This highway is special in that it leads you right into a jump gate. You don't have to do anything, the transition will just work on its own. There we go. Please pay attention to the objective in the corner of your HUD. It's counting down to when you should exit the highway. Wait until it's done, then exit the highway. Now. Well done. in front of you. Their hug color indicates that they are enemies. Some are darker than the others. Those are behind something and can't be hit with your weapons right now. I've now activated your primary weapon. The small dots that have just appeared indicate where the weapons are currently aiming. They will automatically track your current target as long as it's close enough. Note that the hug markers of some targets are smaller. These targets are currently outside your weapon range. Select the closest enemy target. A new HUD element has appeared right in the center of the target. This is the aim ahead indicator. It shows you where you need to aim, which is especially useful if the target is moving. Slowly cycle through all the targets. Cargo drone. When a target outside your weapon range has been selected, you can see the weapon indicators becoming darkened. The aim ahead indicator also changes its appearance. Select the closest enemy target again and shoot at it until it's destroyed. Keep destroying the targets. You'll need to move closer in order to hit some of them. If you look to the right of your crosshair, you will see bars next to your weapons that gradually fill up when you are firing. This is heat. It automatically dissipates when you stop firing. This happens more slowly if there are multiple weapons cooling down at the same time. Your weapon's just overheated. You will not be able to fire until they've cooled to a safe temperature. Cargo drone. Much sturdier than the others. Look at the blue bar above the target 
This is its shield strength. After a few seconds without damage, it will begin to recharge. All shields work like this, including your own. I've now activated your secondary weapon, a missile launcher. It's loaded with a type of guided missile that requires a target lock. Please select the target in front of you. You can now see a lock being acquired. You may fire when ready. The target has dropped something. Fly right at it to pick it up. It's another type of missile. It has been automatically added to your ammunition storage. Missile launchers have limited ammunition. You can see the number of remaining missiles to the left of your crosshair. Look at the curved blue bar below your crosshairs. I'm going to demonstrate damage to your shields. Wait for it. There we go. It's recharging.